we had made this movie called Clerks, and there was no nudity in it, there was no violence in it, there was there wasn't a single explosion, there was barely any movement within the film, you know, it's a really flat movie. Um, but what there was was a lot of colorful language, a lot of people speaking frankly. Um, and, and not really so much um, in terms of uh, what people would do to other people. You know, it wasn't like people, uh, you know, talking about doing harm to one another. It was just guys sitting around talking about fucking. And then the rating came back as an N NC-17, which, you know, kind of blew our minds because we're like, what? Like, based on dudes sitting around talking about sex? Sad dudes at that? You know, dudes who aren't getting laid? <laughs> Podcast, the weekly pseudo-academic pop culture analysis roundtable with drinking and swearing. My name is Christopher Maverick, but you can call me Mav, and I am once again here with my co-hosts, Wayne Wise and Palindrome Hannah Rogers. How's it going, guys? Hey, Mav. Dead. <laughs> Dead. Dead. Gee, it's like you've been doing something hard. <laughs> <laughs> how's dissertation going? Dissertationing dissertadia. How's writing going? <laughs> you finished? Yeah. Yay! Maybe, I mean, like, yay! I mean, like, I turned it into my committee. Um, that's yeah. That's not like passing for those of you who are not grad school people. It just means I wrote a thing, and even if you write a thing, it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> you you are done until they tell you otherwise. Done for now. <laughs> Which is, is unfortunate because I'm dead and can't and can't write again. It's something to consider an accomplishment. I'm not there yet, um, and I'm and I should be. I'm behind schedule, so I'm proud of you. If nothing else, Dad. Yeah. I have no job to give you or diploma or anything like that, but I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, not a dissertation show. This is not what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about, um, what are we talking about? We're talking about movie ratings. Yes. And other ratings, movie, parental ratings, guidelines from movies, um, music, comic books. This is when you, you know, you go and see a movie and there's a big thing on it that says rated R, restricted to all people under the age of 17. And then everybody, well, I don't think people really know what that means. I mean, like you have a vague idea idea of what it means but i don't think people really understand how ratings work for movies and books and music and comics and including the people who ratings. make them because that's because they're stupid <laughs> yes they are stupid but are they Here's useful? why they're stupid oh, god the king speech rated r you know why it's rated r because it has like a bunch of f words and then if you add out all those f words you know what rating it got pg <laughs> Because children cry when they hear the F word. A lot of worse things in this world than curse words, which I guess I should have this position because of this show's tagline. <laughs> well, so my nine year old niece and she's she's been on the show and she she got an iPhone for her birthday last year. And she asked me, you know, um, Uncle Mav, can I listen to your podcast? What's, what's the address? Because I've got the podcast app. And I said, eh, maybe you shouldn't be listening because I certainly <sighs> don't care if she listens. But uh, I don't want to fight with my brother. <laughs> like, so she's not listening yet, but she's very smart and I'm sure she'll figure it out. Um, Eventually, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think I think it'd be great for her to listen because I don't care if she hears the F word. Um, my my sister-in-law frequently tells her you're allowed to hear that word. You're just not allowed to say it. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and you know, she has to deal with my mother who also does not edit herself. So, <laughs> but anyway, none of us, not me, not Hannah, not Wayne, we don't have children. So, you know, as liberal minded as we are about, it's fine for children to hear, you know, swearing. I don't know that we have, you know, the best insight. So we don't we have, have the moral authority to make that decision. No, I mean it's never stopped us, but you know. Oh yeah, okay, fair enough. Fuck. Would you like children? I mean, make me make me an offer, and I can see what I can do. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so we've got two guests this time, both returning to the show. We have Terry. Hey, Terry. Hey, Mav. Thanks for having me again. 
Terry, you 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 own a child or two? Uh, uh, two that uh, as last counting. <laughs> Bought them in a store and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and apparently they don't take them back. So, yeah. <laughs> how old are your kids? Uh, I have a almost five year old who will tell you that he's. Uh, 15 and okay. uh, I have a 17 year old as well. Okay. 17 so, year old girl. So she's cooked, she's done, she can listen to whatever she wants. Yes, very <laughs> much so. All right. And we've invited back Mark, who also has children. Hey, Mark. Hey, happy to be back. <laughs> How many kids do you have? I also have two. Mm-hmm. And their ages? My uh, son is nine and my daughter is four. Holy crap. How did that happen? <laughs> Well, see, there's 12 months in a year, and then <laughs> there. <laughs> And Wayne is 90 and just realized it. So, yeah, so something like that. <laughs> so, well, the reason we invited both of you back to you know, very good fathers, um, um, you presumably have control over the kinds of media that your children imbibe. I don't know what the word consume. Consume. Yeah, it, that's that's true. And, you know, but the, the thing I've learned is that, uh, you know, I, I, I also have an 85 year old father and, uh, you know, he has no patience for technology, but as great as the difference between technology is between my father and I, the, the, that's the same distance, uh, of technology and facility and ease of use as it is between my son and I. So although I consider myself to be a heavy technology user, my son leaves me in the dust every single time. And if I hand him a tablet in three swipes, he is on gone down some rabbit hole on YouTube that, you know, that I didn't even know existed. I've been there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's weird about the content ratings, and this is going to be, I mean, you know, we haven't, we have an international show actually, believe it or not, for some reason, people we listen to us. Yeah, over the all over the world. And so the content ratings are different in different countries. And I don't want to get too much into them, but some places the government decides what a movie is rating rated um, or a book. Other places like the United States of America, I think people think that when you see, you know, because so the, the sign says rated R, no one under 17 admit it without a parent or guardian. PG-13, no one under 13 admit it without a parent or a guardian. Those are not really controlled by any. There's no law. If a movie theater wants to let children see a rated R movie, nothing stops them other than like market forces, like bad things might happen to them from people just getting complaining, but it's not actually illegal. So we have this thing called the MPAA ratings board, which um, I I will link in the show notes, a a wonderful documentary called this film, not yet rated, which explains a lot about how the MPAA decides on movie ratings. But it's largely arbitrary. And Hannah, you were just talking a lot about like, you know, the number of F-bombs dropped in a film can very much affect um, what rating something gets. Yes. Like, I, I think that the rule is PG-13, you get one and a half. <laughs> and then after that, it's rated R. Like, it doesn't matter Fuck. if like it's otherwise, like, it doesn't matter if <laughs> otherwise it's just like, you know, made for TV, like wholesome Hallmark content, which actually is sort of what the King's Speech kind of goes for, except Oscar-ish, which, fun fact, the guy who did the King's Speech also directed Cats. I just want to remind everyone of that. I actually didn't catch that. That's awesome. <laughs> did, did Cats actually have a director? I thought it was, they just kind of filmed the traffic accident that was Cats. And- <laughs> Like, I actually feel really bad making fun of Tom Hooper or Cats because he was so enthusiastic about it. He's like, I loved this when I was 10 and making this movie made me realize why I loved Cats. And it sounded like really nice, except, of course, Cats is, I'm assuming, a terrible movie because I didn't put myself <laughs> through it. It, it was um, rated bad, right? Yeah. I mean, again, I've said on the show, I was a massive fan of the movie Cats when I was like, or not the movie. Well, the movie, because it was, I watched it on HBO when I was like nine. But the, you know, the filmed adaptation of the Broadway show, I am a huge fan, or at least I was when I was a child. And now I realize that part of the reason for that is that children are stupid. You know, <laughs> I was a very bright child. But I, I, was I, was a fan of, I was a huge fan of a lot of dumb shit when I was a child. Yeah. 
it's it's an awful awful like there's no story it's just it is ridiculously garbage it has amazing music and it is a spectacle to behold so in that respect the film was great when when my daughter was uh probably eight or nine years old and she was starting to show some interest in musicals i was explaining what cats was to her and i i got about halfway through the explanation she stopped and said wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute are there are this show does it have people dressed up as cats or are they actually cats? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and for a second, I, w- I was envious because I wish that I could actually see actual yes. cats do the musical of cats. But I guess that's kind of what the idea behind the movie was. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, well, so interesting thing about cats, cats is rated PG. So it's not particularly restrictive, but the plot to cats, such that it is, and again, not much plot, but, you know, not a lot of F bombs, not a lot of swearing, not super violent. I mean, there's a little bit, but really, cats is about a whole bunch of cats who are stoned out of their minds, who really, really like to fuck. That's what the play is about. I mean, it is it is an orgy of cats. And that's not the movie. That's that's the story of cats. That's that's what it is. That's what it always was. It is a massively homoerotically supercharged like sex romp with people in cat suits. That's that's the story. And you don't notice that when you're like nine. I mean, I I didn't. I, I noticed that they were being sexy, but you don't really think about what is exactly going on. It's a move. It's a play about an orgy. I, I just to throw something out there. I think one of the reasons why that gets through is because if I remember correctly, a lot of uh, the specifics, either MPA or the parental guidance or any of them, it has to do with if the characters in question are human or not. Because mm-hmm. um, as an uh, unashamed Transformers Uber fan, there was a commentary on an episode uh, on the box that years ago I was watching in an episode called The Golden Lagoon, where when some of the uh, Transformer characters came out, they were covered in gold and there was a local um, like village and they started worshiping them. And the writers of the show said the only reason they were allowed to get away with that on children's daytime programming is because the characters were robots. They mm-hmm. weren't human. And they said they would lean into that and try to write more like really good classic science fiction morality tales that they couldn't get away with on other cartoons because the restriction was solely, oh, well, they're not human. So kids won't pay attention as much. Meanwhile, to me, when I was a kid, those Transformers were easily like either my friends or my enemies, if they were good guys or bad guys. I didn't see a difference. They were the character on the show and i would assume that's probably maybe some of the same thinking behind cats is oh well yeah they're, they're little kitty cats and everyone will be like oh well, it's great music and oh it'll go over kids heads i also think people just didn't watch it close enough i mean <laughs> like i think that if you're watching it you just go this is garbage and just stop paying attention i think that might help <laughs> well that also explains the uh thundercats after dark episodes that uh shows on show <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Thundercats! I, now I, that's a weird cat show. I, I can see that now. <laughs> I mean, Thundercats. You know, uh, um, Cheetah is just naked. That's, <laughs> she's just a naked woman running around <laughs> with stripes on her. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, like, did I just take an episode about ratings and turn into an episode about weird cat <laughs> yeah, weird, weird cat orgies? Yes. <laughs> Well, let's get back to some of the some of the points then, because uh, I'm thinking about things like so the ratings guidelines again. They're just decided by this mysterious board that watches every movie and then just sort of decides, and they can make decisions like you know, yeah, this might be a little violent for children, but we think it's a good message, so we're just going to let it slide. Or they can be, or they can say this is too sexual and it offends me as a Christian, so I'm so I'm not. It, it is very heavily. Um, evangelically based and uh, the MPAA was founded to replace something called the Hollywood pick, um, the production code um, Hollywood uh, that was in effect the, from the, the Hayes code. Yeah. The Hayes code yeah. from the forties to the sixties that was designed. Now there were actual rules in place where in, it wasn't a different, different ratings um, for about 20 years. You just weren't allowed to do certain things. Like you just couldn't have anything sexual. You couldn't have certain language. You couldn't have a certain amount of violence. Violence is more forgiving in America than, um, than sex is in some other countries. It's the exact opposite. Um, you can get away with, 
with a lot more sex, but less violence in, in the UK than in, um, than in America. Um, but the Hays Code said no to all of that. And then there was this point where people were were uh, American studios were importing foreign films. We were getting a bunch of French films and they were better than ours because um, because basically they weren't just like living by American guidelines. And then Hollywood said, oh, we've got to put a stop to that. So they got rid of the Hayes Code and then they adopted the MPAA, which was we'll have different levels of reading for different for different ages. And that's where that ratings board comes from. So you end up with extremely arbitrary arbitrary rules, but most of them are based around Hayes was essentially like the people who define, who designed this were, they really had a very, very outdated for the time mentality on what was, what was appropriate. So you're living up to this fictional standard of what was good moral conduct for the 1940s. And it's 2020. Now that's what, that's where the codes come from. Now we've adjusted them. And it varies based on who's on the board and just like, you know, like over time, people die and get replaced. And, you know, so they have slightly different standards. But you're you're chasing just this weird ideal that no one really understands anymore. Well, I think it's it's also, you know, sorry to, to drag us back historically, but it's also important to note that Jack Valente, who was the guy behind the MPAA ratings, he wanted to get rid of the Hays Code, he said, because it smacked of censorship. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, which yeah. is ludicrous. But, uh, you know, I, I let's get rid of that censorship and impose my new censorship. Right. Well, it's not yes. censorship when there are yeah. ideas that you yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, that's true. <laughs> And which is and and the whole concept of censorship is a big part of this conversation. I think um, mm-hmm. we should talk about a little bit about what censorship is. I think people yeah. misunderstand that word a lot. Um, again, particularly in America, where we are, because we have because our constitution, or well, technically the amendments to our constitution, specifically have an edict against censorship. <laughs> people take it very seriously, but also they misunderstand it. So the constitution says. Essentially, thou shalt not censor, but it means the government. What it means is that the government can censor free, can't censor speech. You have freedom of speech, freedom of press. It doesn't actually mean that um, random people you you can decide, for instance, Disney has rules about uh, you can't really smoke in a Disney movie unless you get very special permission. And then it's mostly only for villains. It's why it's why Nick Fury doesn't smoke cigars in Marvel movies, even though he always had in, in the comics. They didn't want to promote smoking. So you have rules like that, but that's that's self-censorship. You, you can do that. Um, what becomes weird is then you have people saying stuff like, well, it's not censorship if the government doesn't do it. That's not true either. It is censoring. It's just that we don't have laws against it. Because I, whenever I was you know, doing my little bit of research, um, one thing I, I guess I knew, but I subconsciously knew is um, just like you were saying earlier, all of these ratings, um, as far as who is selecting them, not just the board, but the, the filmmakers that are submitting them, all of this is technically voluntary. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and what, what restricts it is like you were saying before, it's, it's marketplace. I mean, mm-hmm. back, back in yesteryear, well, yesteryear, it's not that far back, but like when <laughs> theaters were just two theater, like there was the two, the, um, the two picture marquee out front, you had your a picture and your B picture. Um, that was when I think a lot of uh, theater owners would say, you know, we're, we can only carry two movies. We're going to be more um, uh, specific and, and um, what we will take and what we won't take. And so that was when uh, the, you know, Hollywood producers and the filmmakers would be like, we need to make sure we get this movie out there. So we have to appeal to um, what they are willing uh, to, t- to take on. So the idea of something being, you know, X or NC 17 rated, they're like, Oh no, no, we can't have that here. We only have, we only, you know, only two pictures. Um, this is a small town, you know, that's, you know, that's for an adult. Uh, we don't have an adult theater. What, however they would misconstrue it. It wouldn't be necessarily because of the content. It's just that the people that control the distribution and the access to the, to the, to the art, they're the ones that, you know, called all those shots. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and we also we also used to have a lot more independently owned theaters in this country as well. There was such a thing as a neighborhood movie theater that wasn't a huge multiplex. That, and you know, all the multiplexes are owned by one co- or, or you know, a third of them are owned by one company, and the other third are owned by the uh, the second, and the last third are owned by the third company. And that's pretty much makes up the totality of all the theaters in the U.S. Um, you know, without with some some holdouts here and there, but uh, it used to be historically that, that the theater owners had a lot more say in what was what was going into the theaters, and they could stand up and say, "No, we don't we don't want this picture." But anymore, it's all it's all you know, it's all managed months months if not years out, and uh, you know, there's a, there's a slate. They all know what's getting, getting programmed in that theater, and, and what the what the adult option is going to be and what the kid option is going to be and what the, you know, and what the Oscar option is going to be. And, you know, they know what that is going to be for next year, the year after that, and the following year. Like, if you look at the news, and this is just a side note, so I won't get too into it. Disney, like, has held even big theater companies hostage to make them make sure X screens play this and, like, they do this. Uh, I mean... There, there is like because I mean Disney controls so much of like the big properties that everyone wants to see. They can make deals and like try and get more and more profits from theater tickets and stuff. So like, there's a lot that goes into what is being shown and how it's being shown and when it's being scheduled to be shown. And I could be wrong. So if someone knows otherwise, you know, stop me. But I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the streaming platforms have um, in a way surged uh, in popularity amongst filmmakers is because they are now given an outlet where um, the person, uh, the, the, the entity that's distributing the uh, content now out to the audience is arguably way less scrutinizing because um, I mean, Netflix alone, there is because there's the option you can have like a kid's profile and then you're just regular general audiences profile. There's, you know, kind of that level of um, like filtering out what, you know, kids should and shouldn't see. And of course that goes back to like the V chip and how many other things also, but just in, just in general, I think from what I've, you know, seen on, on the interwebs is that a lot of filmmakers really do dig going, uh, the Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and, and Apple route, because there does seem to be kind of less restrictions put on them, uh, content wise. Well, not Disney plus, because I was just reading reading an article on variety about the Lizzie McGuire reboot, which I think that this conversation speaks to a very specific demographic, um, which is (laughs) people like me. Um, (laughs) They have put pause on the production. And apparently part of the reason why is because Hilary Duff and the original creator who has since been fired, um, like wanted to do like a more, more adult version. And Disney was like, no, like we we want it to be like more family friendly and it's like come on disney like you you want to like, keep she's like i'm 30 <laughs> yeah and so, and so i'm like, 30 you know, i don't have 13 year old problems so like the you know the production has been put on hold while they try and negotiate between what hillary duff wants and what disney wants and maybe it'll get moved to hulu because disney has moved so like i mean that's why like disney originally made those deals with netflix with daredevil so they could put more adult superhero content somewhere that wasn't a family friendly place right or whatever that even means what does it even mean to be family friendly like they they like have these if you want to talk about content reigns that are ridiculous they have they've labeled like some of their older films like ferdinand the bull with this program is presented as originally created it may contain outdated cultural depictions which it's ridiculous because like okay yeah actually you know what um i find the depictions of spaniards and ferdinand the bull way more offensive than violence or sex or f-bombs but Mm -hmm. like this is also like the most passive thing it may contain outdated cultural depictions and like what does that even mean and they still have like the G rating listed next to it and also they don't even do it for films like Pocahontas which if you want to talk about a film offensive to the history of indigenous people by like telling like myths about like how like oh if only we could just get along with white sellers who are coming to take our homes and turning a really horrible relationship into a very romantic relationship what okay but you, you you know like what what is really offensive and like what are we protecting people from when we like come up with ratings and are the, the is it the things that we really should be concerned about so that's one of the things that i think is interesting um one of the problems with the original rating system is 
Um, okay, actually, I'll start with music because I mentioned I mentioned in the blog, for instance, music has just um, because of some stuff that happened in, in the late late 80s, early 90s. Tipper Gore just decided that she wanted to go to war with the RIAA, the the Association of Record Companies in America. Um, she was upset about the musical group Two Live Crew, and she didn't like that they had offensive language. So. Basically, the record companies all got together and they said, we are going to rate ourselves. And they came up with a very yep. simple system. Music was either fine or it was parental advisory. That was yeah, it. She, There's only yeah, two she, levels. <laughs> she formed the PMRC, the Parents Music Resource Center. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And, and, and there, they, there were hearings and all the stuff. So. And so but but all they did was they literally said this is either either child appropriate or it's not. And who decided it was child appropriate was basically the companies making the music in the first place. Companies, yeah. Yeah. And what they and and Hannah, you and I were talking like essentially what they're doing is they're saying, does this song have the word fuck in it? All right. Then it's not appropriate for kids. That's it. And that was pretty much it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, my one of my favorite responses to that is uh, in the early 90s, Iggy Pop released an album called American. Caesar and it had a warning label on it that said, Warning, this is an Iggy Pop album. <laughs> that should be enough. Yeah. Well, but so, so, so the problem is like it was literally what was child appropriate or not was just someone decided that kids can't hear the F word. That was it. And then if you do, but if you look at like the MPAA ratings, it's not binary, but it's most people don't know what goes into a PG movie versus a PG 13 movie versus an R movie versus an, uh, an NC 17 movie. It's, it's, Those, the number just of, sort of, it's the number of boobs, right? You, you, well, it's lots of things, but like, it's not a, it, it, there's no nuance, right? Like as a parent, can you decide, well, it's okay for my kid to hear swearing, but not okay for my kid to see boobs. Can you decide? I don't want my kid associated, uh, like, like seeing stuff about racism, or I don't want my kid seeing violence. Like there's not a, there's not really uh, a lot of nuance. If you look in the small print, it says rated PG because of, and in little tiny letters, it says why they picked it. But look, nobody reads that. No. And the cable companies in the eighties, they sort of got better about it. They started doing this thing where they'll put like little letters like this has nudity and violence and adult language. This one has adult language and adult situations. And like, and you had to, you know, at least there was a little bit of nuance for it. Um, comic book companies, you know, for the longest time, they just had code approved and not code approved. And in what early two thousands, Wayne, they 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 basically started abandoning that yeah, and yeah, came well, up with their own systems. Well, yeah, and the code disappeared the moment they started the direct sales market, which was essentially the nineteen seventies. You can go back farther than that. Underground comics, you know, Robert right. Crumb and all that stuff. That was never submitted to the code, but that was they were never sold on newsstands. Right, right. Uh, the the code comics code essentially existed so retailers would know whether or not this had an approval, so they would feel safe selling it to kids. Mm-hmm. And over the course of 30 years, most retailers had no idea that's what it was for. Mm-hmm. And and so, so, you know, you get to the modern day and it's really hard because to Hannah's point, who does decide what's family appropriate? Like you kind of want that answer to be the parents, but the rating systems don't really have enough granularity for that to work. So we have two parents. How do you decide what's um what's appropriate and, for your children? And there's no consistency with the comics thing in particular. There's no consistency to to what the, the ratings are. And I don't even remember them making any big announcements. They just started putting letters on their on their front cover. T, which I think is teen or, you know, something. I think it varies between how Marvel uses it and how DC uses it. Yeah. Uh, but but to your point, Mav, as far as, you know, as a parent, um, first of all, my wife and I don't always agree on which one is appropriate and not appropriate um, as far as what uh, to let the kids see. But I have always kind of fallen back on the idea that have I seen it and do I think it's appropriate? And I base that sort of on what did I see at that age? Was I able to handle it? But the other thing is that the pa- I mean, this is you know, Friday the Thirteenth when I was like seven. <laughs> well, see, I was gonna I was gonna bring up the fact that my mom let me see Rainbow Three when I was eight, and, and she, in her mind, it's because it was just violence. Meanwhile, my wife says, "There's no way you're showing our son Rainbow 3. I'm like, "Well, first of all, I don't think he wants to see it." <laughs> but second, well, 
But second of all, no, I mean, I it's there is the difference, I think, is that no one's going to know better. And, and I think I, I'll stand I'll, I'll draw this line in the sand and I'll stand by it. I don't think anyone knows the emotional maturity of their children better than th- their parents. You know, if you just default to a ratings guide and let that make the choices for you, then if there are things that conflict with any kind of personal belief, then yeah, that ratings isn't, it's, it's very loose. It, it's not, it's not going to catch everything because like you said, it's not nuanced. So like, for instance, my wife and I recently, we, we kind of fought back since my, my son had turned nine. We're like, you know, I think we were nine when the Simpsons came out and, you know, the Simpsons certain episodes, you know, maybe not all of them, but there's some that he, he's probably old enough. He would definitely get some of the humor and like it. And, you know, we're, you know, want to encourage to, you know, start watching a little bit more mature stuff. He, he's so he's, his best friend is his sister. And since his sister's so much younger than him, he, he likes to be able to do things that she can participate with. So at the same time, it's like, well, you're kind of missing out, but on some, some stuff you might be liking yourself because uh, today, I, you know, Terry was saying before, you know, tablets, devices, YouTube and all that. And my, uh, I, I wish <laughs> I, I wish we could control it. We really can. Our kids just love, you know, pulling out a tablet and just going on YouTube. So we try to do our best to keep an eye on what they're what they're consuming on that. And there's supposed to be filters. But like Terry said earlier, a couple swipes. And mm-hmm. if you're not keeping a track of it, you can well, go down. Nowadays. the rabbit hole. <laughs> There's a lot of Nazis on you on YouTube. It's what it's making the complicated. Nazis, I hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> like there is people that have preyed on that. No, there there are people that knew know that about kids and have preyed upon that. But all this stuff with like the, those Peppa Pig videos and like Spider Man videos for years back, where it's essentially like mods of Grand Theft Auto, and there's videos of like Spider Man going around and like beheading people. That's 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 a real thing. Those videos out there existed, and they they would put in the search options. You know, the search options would be like Spider Man, Peppa Pig, Fun Adventure, Yay! Kids will. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making this up. Not making this no, up. It's not. It's definitely not. And, and it's That's just, amazing. And it's just insane. Some of the stuff that would come up, and we we would a couple of years back when he was younger, we found some of this stuff popping up. We're like, you should be watching this, bud. It would be something like Spider Man. Like it was. I think I might have already said this, but it was like a Grand Theft Auto mod or something where it was just mm-hmm. like Spider Man running around, and he would just watch them like. Why are you watching this? Spider Man's boring right now. And just find a different video. So, um, I mean, the only other other thing, kind of in that line of thought, I can think of is like on some of the streaming platforms uh, on Vudu. There is a little thing on the detail pages for movies that is provided by Common Sense Media, and yes. they <laughs> right and they break it out. They break out um, subject matter and what that particular movie is saying. And here's two that I just I, I think it's unique. So the, the two examples I'm giving are Ace Ventura and the original Hellboy. And for um, Hellboy, uh, let me, I'm trying to toggle between the two of them. So for Hellboy, it says age 14 plus entertaining, but scary superhero tale is violent. And then they have violence four out of five, sex not present, language one out of five, consumerism, um, because consumerism apparently is, can be offensive, possibly, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, three out of five and then drinking drugs and smoking uh, three out of five but what parents need to know is that uh, uh, the character must do battle against a demonic force that has re-emerged contains frightening images a darkened macabre tone and the sad death of a central character great deal of violence so I that's that's pretty accurate in my opinion um, and then I just find this funny how um, they uh, make this determination because now this, I don't think this is, um, how do I put this? It, it says, Grace Ventura, age 14 plus, dumb 90s comedy full of gross humor, <laughs> profanity, and sex. <laughs> so, um, 
I'm, well, it's, I'm not, it's not wrong. <laughs> right, right. I'm not going to yeah. argue that. Um, I, but once again, you were saying earlier about, uh, you know, when your kids liking stupid shit, I, I kind of like Ace Ventura. I know it's stupid, but it makes me laugh. But the fact that in the parental guide, they have to point out it's dumb. It's like, well, now that's your opinion. But that's also what this whole conversation is generally about is because you have to be able to separate content from personal opinion. And I think the crux of a lot of this is that people think of the ratings as appropriateness when in theory, I think what would be better is some sort of categorization that doesn't, doesn't make it about rating it, but about just organizing it. So you have an idea of what you're getting because even within, you know, PG 13 and R rated material, there are things that one person might find offensive and another person might not. But if you know that going in, then you know if that's to your palate. Like, is this the kind of thing I'm going to enjoy or not? And if you do it based on just as a rated R or not, I don't think that's effect- as effective. I, I will say, um, I was going to, I mean, Common Sense Media will be linked in the show notes because of all the parents I asked when we were preparing this episode. That was the suggestion that came up most often. People, people do seem to like this website. Um, <laughs> mostly for the reasons you just said that there are, that there's a lot of granularity for it. It tells you you know at least in their opinion or in, in the raiders opinion how much of i mean consumerism it's weird that that's even a category um that said um some of the complaints that i heard about it was i heard from i heard from some people and i've heard this both ways um depending on how religious the parent was but i've had some friends tell me they didn't like it because they thought that it was too christian in its viewpoint from an, from atheist thought from atheist standpoints and and then i've had other parents complain that it didn't think things were offensive enough when they were offensive to christian so people who are very evangelical thought it wasn't you know stringent enough which is very odd look let me tell you something from someone who grew up in an evangelical <laughs> household and who read <laughs> plugged in online to figure out who still won't like, swear on our show <laughs> I, yeah okay that's you know that's not true you, you, if you, if you, if you, if you go I, to the know, this episode you will hear plenty <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, but if you go to um plugged in online um you you will get something that's a lot like common sense in terms of like breaking things down by categories but like they they i will never forget this and i whined about it to mav when we play this episode I read the review for Princess Diaries 2 and that's when I realized all of it was just complete bullshit. There you go, Wayne. And <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Princess Diaries 2 is I I think like a pretty unoffensive movie for pretty much all ages because if you are young enough <laughs> to not get some of the, the more quote unquote mature things like you're not going to get them. Um, they didn't give it a bad rating because of those quote more mature things. They gave it a bad rating because at the end of the film, spoiler alert for like a really old movie starring Anne Hathaway and Chris Pine. Um, you, you will know that like uh, she gives a speech being like, I shouldn't have to marry to rule the country because I'm qualified. And just because I'm a girl doesn't mean that I need a man to do my job, which is like the most basic, basic standard unoffensive feminism ever and they <laughs> ripped it apart and they were like what are you talking about how dare yes. you say this and i was like okay well if this is what these people believe that like women can't be equal to men and do a job without getting married then i am done with this bullshit <laughs> done like i don't know well, who <laughs> swears uh, i mean uh, you know you defined censorship earlier or and and I think that you know we probably don't want to go, to go down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what's offensive or or you know obscenity. I know it when I see it, but um, you know I think that it, you know it obviously varies wildly between households. You know my yes my guy my little guy has a uh, uh, has a list of of uh, a playlist on uh, our mm-hmm. our Amazon, and you know there's some fairly hip stuff on there for, you know, for a five-year-old. Um, and, you know, we don't really worry too much about the, the language. And there, you know, there are quite a few F-bombs and, and you know, other assorted 
uh, you know, language that could could be considered offensive. Um, mm-hmm. But being five, you know, his his elocution is not always what it should be. And the other day, he he said he asked Amazon to play something, and I don't know what it thought uh, he asked for, but it started to read scripture aloud. Mm-hmm. And you have never seen me move so fast <laughs> as I did to <laughs> turn off the scripture that was being pumped into his his head because I find that far more offensive than I do. Change it over to two live crew immediately, didn't it? Exactly. (laughs) I I think it it not only probably varies from household, it varies by child. I mean, Mark, Mark, you made the point of you, you think that, you know, a parent knows best what their parents, what their children are, are capable of or are ready for. I I will, I mean, I will take my nieces again, my brother's children into account. They're, they're nine and 13 now. So things are much more relaxed than when they were young. Younger, but um, the older, my older niece is, well, again, less so now that she's 13. But when she was nine, she was far more sensitive about violence or anything like that than like her at the time, five year old sister. So there were things that the younger child was just allowed to watch that they'd be, they'd tell the older one, no, this is not for you. This is no, no. Um, yeah. Like the older one um, could not, there was a point when the younger child was watching Harry Potter and Star Wars movies and the older one was wasn't allowed to because they're like, no, people will die and you will have nightmares. <laughs> and that's, and that's, and well, I, that's and, just the rule. In my case, I mean, my, my brother is nearly 19 years older than I am. and I'm fairly certain he's offended by more things than me. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's but I mean, like, it's it's hard because, you know, for, for with the sites like um, like Common Sense Media and Plugged In, at least they're trying. I think Hannah made yeah. a good point of, yeah, it's kind of bullshit to like just say this is inappropriate because, you know, because it gives the message that women don't need to get married. And obviously we know that's wrong. OK, obviously I don't want that. And that makes me not like your site. However, where I will give them credit is they are at least explaining why if you have that kind of view, if you have the kind of view that you want your child exposed to or not exposed to certain messages, I do think that things like common sense media, which tell you, look, this is why we gave it a violent score of three. It has these scenes. Now it's kind of weird because, you know, you're worried about spoilers and stuff, but what I think you want is, I don't, I don't think you want, you know, a letter grade, I think, or, or, a, or a score. I think you want a nuanced discussion to somehow sort of tell you what's going to happen so that you know if it's appropriate to your kid or not. Well, yeah, you know, I was just going to point out that, um, you know, some 20 years ago, I, I went to Los Angeles and was in film school. And literally the, the school I was in was it was designed to create um, movie executives. I mean, it was it was basically a weasel factory. And, 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 you know, that's, it, it didn't necessarily take, cause I, I didn't like anybody telling me, you know, I mean, literally I had, I had class topics like, you know, how to get out of a contract you signed. And I was like, what, what, why, why would we do that? But, you know, one of the things they did teach us in film school was they always referred to the MPAA guidelines. Yes. And, you know, and, and, and you've already made the point, but I think that it, they are, they are effectively simply guidelines. And, you know, while, you know, I don't expect any usher at the, you know, at my local Cineplex to be, to be, uh, checking IDs and, and turning kids away, um, you know, because they're, they're, they're not deputized and it's not the law, but at the same time, you know, it is, it is effectively a guideline and I use it as such. I, you know, I will glance at what they find offensive and, uh, you know, and if I think that, okay, there's a chance that this might be an issue, I'll either, you know, rescreen it or I'll sit down and I'll, I'll watch some of it. And, you know, if, if we get three minutes into it, um, you know, I'll, you know, I've, I will say, hey, bud, this, this is, this is, you're not ready for this one yet. Why don't, we'll put this on in a couple of years when you're ready, but let's, uh, let's go find some Thomas the Tank Engine instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, another point on top of that, I think, um, just from what I can tell, like Terry, you and I are very on very similar uh, levels here, where it's where we are engaged in what uh, media our kids are consuming. But there are, you know, thousands, uh, 
arguably thousands definitely of parents out there that whether it's restrictions on just, you know, time um, or um, unfortunately, maybe just laziness. Uh, some of it maybe just like fear, fear of failure or not confidence in their own decisions. They'll default to a ratings board or something or, you know, they'll think oh, it's like checks and balances will kick in and take over like trust the V chip. You know, I maybe I'm going to make the wrong call and I'm just too tired. It's, don't worry. This will filter it out. And my kid, I won't have to worry about it because, you know, my kids won't see anything they're not supposed to. Um, but that's also only if a parent's aware of it. I mean, I look back to my youth and, you know, if, if, if there was the opportunity to take advantage of my mom not knowing something was good or bad, <laughs> yeah. I was going to go for it. Because oh, I, I would I would get that HBO guide the last week of every month and go through it like I was a sacred in Sanskrit. Right, exactly. <laughs> like put ourselves in our kids' positions. You know, when I was thir- when I was uh, thirteen and fourteen, Mortal Kombat came out, and the ASRP was being created because of like kids like me and my classmates were like, <laughs> "Hey, did you see this game? Like, there's blood. Like, you the head comes off when you fight. Like, we gotta get this." And then all of a sudden, here comes. ESRB, oh, that that game's rated M. But, and once again, about gatekeepers, that only restricts you know GameStop from selling it. If the parent doesn't know any different, they're coming in, they're buying it. It's the yeah. same thing what happened with Grand Theft Auto years later. There were parents who still didn't know that video games were being rated. It's like Grand Theft <laughs> Auto, it's a fun car game. Here you go. Meanwhile, yeah. hey, oh. how many hookers did you pick up tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like, ga- like games, like, I mean, this is obviously not true for all parents, as you've said. I feel like games, like, kind of have taken on what novels used to be, like, back in like the 18th and 19th century where like they were they're like the new big like media that's kind of the dominant thing so like people are like worried about how it's going to affect us by reading it or in this case playing it so like a lot of parents i know and my parents for sure were very very conscious about like they wouldn't even let me have a game boy until i was in like upper elementary school because they wanted me to like read and not write out my brain uh and then like i think the most mature thing i got to play was zelda um but and then like movies i feel like parents like modder because like they they do have like the very obvious ratings and it's also expensive to take your kids to the movie theater so you want to like not waste it on something bad or like you can watch Mm -hmm. a you know a movie or tv show together like my parents let me watch terminator when we were like fairly young but my mother made us like close our eyes so she could fast forward through all the sex scenes um (laughs) which actually in hindsight like i was really confused about there being a romance because I missed that. Um, you know. yeah. Yeah. One Terminator two. That's it. And Terminator two not, suddenly makes no sense. Where'd that kid come from? <laughs> no, okay, it's actually funny, and I still remember this. Um, like Dish Network had a pay per view special, and it was Terminator one and three. So we skipped Terminator two. So actually, <laughs> wow. oh my god, that's just mean. They, they made you. They made you watch three. Like, oh, anyway. like you want to bet it was torture. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, like, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to dog on my parents. They like really cared and really tried. Um, but, yeah. but like, one of the things that I still like am mad about to this day, and I've talked about on this show, is they banned me from reading Harry Potter out of an abundance of caution, um, which a lot mm-hmm. of parents did in the '90s and early 2000s. But like, for some reason, it seems like books. Like not comic books, like actual novels. Like for the Real most books, part, words. Yeah, like for the most part, people ignore what their kids read unless it's yes. for like a school assignment or super well known. So like, oh, my people- parents did. Oh, I read horribly inappropriate stuff as a teenager. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you both you brought that up, though, because that was something I'd mentioned to Mav was um, as a self-publishing author. One of the things when I upload my content, there is a section where I can um, select either the appropriate age level for um, it says uh, U.S. grade or children's age. And then, of course, there's, you know, 18 plus. But there's something funny about 
if you select that, the idea behind it is, at least this is my understanding, is it's for like the Amazon uh, teaching store. It helps um, separate what's uh, what would be appropriate for certain grades and certain not. But if you're just writing a book and you just want to be able to label it appropriately, um, just like a movie or video game or, or a TV show, just so people are aware if it has explicit language, violence or nudity, there is... One issue, though, is that part of the algorithms will actually, from what I've read, um, it will kind of submerge your book from a lot of general searches. Yeah. Like there is a, um, a kboards.com I was looking up earlier just so I could have something I could reference. And um, there's a lot of discussion about if you do this and someone said, avoid the 18 plus rating at all costs. I only have anecdotal evidence of this, but I did this once on an already published book and sales plummeted from 10 a day to zero a day and never re recovered even after unclicking that button. And someone said, the problem is Amazon doesn't trust adults to make that decision for themselves. So instead of giving us the option to see mature content, they just regulate anything labeled mature to the dungeon and it doesn't come up in generic mm -hmm. searches. And of course, someone else said, oh, well, I took the 18 plus off my succubus books after reading some fairly explicit sex scenes in a best-selling young adult book. And no one ever complained after that. <laughs> well, that's the same thing happens with podcasts. So this show, this show in particular, um, is currently on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five star rating if you do. <laughs> but on, on Apple Podcasts, we are currently rated as clean. The reason we're rated as clean is because I only have two options. The options were clean and explicit. And I've never felt comfortable with either option. Um, yeah. I don't think we're explicit. It's, it's a false binary. Yeah, we swear. I mean, we do like. So I don't. I don't like calling us clean. We do swear on on occasion. And um, Wayne, when we were designing the show, this was a discussion that we had. We sat yeah. down and we tried to figure out: Do we want to allow this or not? Because. We wanted it to be organically the way we talk. We're not filthy mouth sailors, you know, but we but but we will swear on occasion. And it's, you know, long as it's organic, I don't care. On the other hand, I so I didn't want to call it clean, but we're not explicit because right. I actually do listen to some explicit podcasts and I don't feel like we hit the level to where that need, needs to be. Yeah. And when I changed it, because we were explicit for a while, when I changed it to clean was I was just listening to a show that was rated clean. That was about sex. Um, it was I mean, it was and by the way, good show, but it was basically a couple of women discussing their personal sex lives in very, very graphic detail, which I thought was educational and a well put together show, but certainly racier than anything that we've ever done on our show. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, if they're if they're clean, then we are. But there's no good rating because like, what does that even mean? Like, we're not violent. We're, you know, all, most of our discussions are, you know, obviously pseudo academic. That's what we do. And there is no good way to do it. There's no common sense media version of rating this. Like what I want to be able to say is may use F bomb on occasion, may say bullshit yeah. on occasion. You know, that, that's what I, that's what I want to be able to say. And I want a parent to be able to decide, um, like, I, I need to have a conversation with my brother of, is my niece allowed to listen to my show or not? And, you know, it's kind of weird because like, I, I, I feel like the idea if, if my brother saw some, saw a podcast that was rated, um, that was rated parental advisory explicit, he'd absolutely say no. On the other hand, my niece has my phone number. She calls me all the time. We talk and I, you know, I, I don't like swear at her like she's my friend, but like she's heard me swear. She's heard her mother swear. She's heard her grandmother swear. Her father a little less, but when he's angry, you know, <laughs> like she knows what those words mean and it's fine. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's none of us live in a in a perfect vacuum world where we can we can shield our kids at all times. I was, uh, uh, you know, going back now, probably seven or eight years ago, I was driving my daughter home from school. So it's it's probably four, four thirty in the afternoon. And we're listening to NPR, probably the, the safest thing you could imagine. And they were doing a story about uh, the people who work in Amazon fulfillment facilities. And they used the word fairly, they dropped it into the story fairly early on. And I, I let it slide past 
And then, you know, three, four minutes into the story, they, they dropped it a, a couple more times. And my 11 year old daughter sitting in the passenger seat looks over at me and she says, Hey, dad, what's a dildo? <laughs> awesome. And yeah, I mean, the, obviously the, the, the fact was that Amazon sells a lot of sex toys, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, so, so all of a sudden, you know, I find myself driving along, you know, ask after, your mother. <laughs> No, I, I didn't. I didn't take the coward's way out, but it, it oh, took okay, me. Good for you. <laughs> it took me a good uh, probably forty five seconds to stop my stop the giggles and uh, <laughs> to to actually. Uh, I mean, because you know, I, I like I said, I, I wasn't a coward about it, but I, I I can say that I was not entirely mature about it either. But, uh, <laughs> You know, but we did we did have a, have a frank conversation, one that I never expected to be having with a you know eleven year old. Well, and, and that's good, good right? For I you mean, and good for you. Yeah, yeah that's good. I mean that's great. I, I've I've said before on the show several times. I watched Roots when I was two years old because my mother wanted to watch Roots, and that's that's what it was. Uh, and you have options. I mean, you, you mentioned the V chip before um, briefly, which you know, for people who don't know, there was a point, and they still exist in televisions. I don't know. If, does anybody use the V chip in 2020? Is that like I'm even aware? <laughs> yeah, there they exist in all televisions sold to where you can get uh, you can program your television to manually block things that you know are that's listed right. as V or or as S or whatever you know for whatever for whatever code um the code on the so the v chip was first installed in my cable box um i think i was 12 or 13 years old and the code was 2537 i'm mentioning that because if my mother listens to the show this will be the first time that she's ever found out what the code was to the v chip <laughs> on my on my cable box because when the cable box got that and i saw that i was like holy shit well, if anybody's going to control this in my house, it's going to be me. So I immediately <laughs> went and set the codes <laughs> and I never told my mom or my brothers what, what they were. And like once they're set, you know, they don't want your kids breaking in. So once you're, they're set, you can't unset it unless you know the code. I did because I said it and I just stopped everybody. So that problem just goes away. And I think that this is sort of an issue because, you know, you talked about like not being able to stop your three year old from doing looking at whatever he wants to look at on the iPad. because children are smarter than their parents <laughs> when it comes to technology and you're not really, you know, are, are you really going to be able to stop someone from listening to something if they want, if the, if your kid is smart enough to bypass your authority um, so that they can listen to bad language, then they're probably mature enough to listen to the language. <laughs> I have yeah, found Harry hilarious. Potter online at any time. Yeah. I, I did mean, you? No, because I was a self disciplining subject and I respected my parents, even though I thought that they were wrong. So I spite, <laughs> I spited them by reading super violent things like Greek mythology. And so now anytime we have this argument, I point out all the offensive things in Greek mythology <laughs> that were not in Harry Potter. So you read instead of <laughs> So basically what I'm saying is is I'm an asshole and uh, <laughs> my parents were saints for dealing with me. <laughs> because even if I am right, I still manage to be an asshole about it. I just got to say that I love like burned out from dissertation, Hannah, because this is the most, like, this is by far the most you've ever sworn. And it's good. Go it's, back and listen to the Mississippi politics episode. I beg you. Yeah, I know, but it's just, it's just great because like, you know, the joke, the joke on the show has always been that you're, you're the 12 year old, except that like, you know, if I change the rating on this episode, it's going to be because of you. Well, I won't be around to see it. So. Um, so apparently the two things that bother me are censorship and Cindy Hyde Smith, which, by the way, Mississippi, don't talk to her. The election's coming up. Don't do it. Don't vote for Bloomberg. I know he's advertising a lot. He's a racist, sexist, transphobe, and you shouldn't vote for an oligarch billionaire, but that's another story. Anyway. (laughs) I missed you so much. (laughs) So we've resolved nothing? (laughs) I guess not. (laughs) Solved that you shouldn't be a dick. I, I had somebody recently ask me if they if they felt uh, if I felt that the latest uh, Harley Quinn movie was appropriate for their nine year old, and you know, and and I had to think about it because 
I mean, yes, there's some, there's definitely some language in there, and that that's true. Mm-hmm. But there's there's I mean, there is a drug reference. Um, you know, I mean, if you, but it, but they're not overt about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 besides that, it's just a hundred minutes of nonstop cartoon like violence. The kneecap thing really I was gonna say people that. cringe in my theater, like adults, like there were no kids there. They were all like, and, and, and I'm going to use I'm going to use Harley as an example of how these things change as well, because there was recently a Harley Quinn graphic novel that came out aimed at young, a younger readership, completely out of the continuity of the Marvel you're Universe. About, you're, talking fantastic. About the, you're talking about the yeah, Digest one. Oh, it's yeah, so it's, good. Link, it's yes, so good. It's so good. Show notes. And yeah, it's, in the show notes. <laughs> it's absolutely full of drag queens, which is more offensive to some people than others, you know? So it's like, that rating thing. I think it's absolutely appropriate for the age they're aiming for, this young adult you know, readership kind of thing. But the fact that it's full of drag queens is going to piss off a tremendous number of people who are just wanting absolutely. to see Harley Quinn's story. So how do you rate it? You know, um, <laughs> there's no inappropriate sex. There's no inappropriate drug use. Yeah, I don't know that there's a swear word in it. I don't believe there is. Not that I know. Well, but see, here's the question that we said about censorship. And here's the thing. It's not censorship when it agrees with my personal. Yeah. Um, like, I, I, I am obviously, you know, if this is the first time listening to the show, all of your regular hosts and most of your guests are extremely liberal about sort of <laughs> and, and politically. Sorry and to so, find that on you at the end of the episode. Yeah, but <laughs> obviously, you might have some hints from the whole Bloomberg is now right. playing. <laughs> right, and, and so, so like, yeah, I don't have a problem with a. Uh, and by the way, lovely story. About, and I think she's supposed to be. She's. Does, do they give her age in it? She's a teenager. Yeah, she's like, a teenager. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, she's 16. like a homeless teenager who. Yeah. And and it's a it's a great young adult story about a teenage Harley Quinn. And yeah, it's very um, I'll say it's extremely LGBTQ friendly. Finding a home and family amongst a Mm -hmm. bunch of drag queens. Yes. And if you're if you're me or Wayne, you love this story and you go, you know what? This is great for the kids because we don't have a problem with the idea of gay people. But I am aware that there is a certain part of the world. Um, there's a certain people who do have a problem with that and do think that this should be offensive. Um, I there are people who are like, well, this has a gay kiss in it, and therefore we should um w- we should like make this a, a higher rating. I understand. I submit to you that there was a time when, and actually this is this is still true. Um, we didn't talk about it as much, but the MPA tends to rate sex scenes um, for uh, more adult when they um, star people of color than it does for um, white people. You can have a couple in bed in a PG rated movie if they're white and imply that they just had sex. You know, I mean, you can't show anything, but you can imply that if you show the same couple as a black couple in bed, you're probably going to get stuck with at least a PG 13, maybe an R it's a problem. So yes, that said, if you're transphobic, I guess you have the right to pass that on to your children. And I don't want to say that, but on the other hand, I, I do want to say it's okay for, I want to say it's okay for, I think Terry, it was you saying you didn't want your kid listening to random scripture on the Amazon, on the Amazon device. Right. Oh, right. Good Lord, no. right. So I, yeah, I good Lord, that's your, no. that's your right as a parent. Right. And like, you know, I'm not everybody's good. I mean, if you're really horrible, you shouldn't be denying your kid the word of God or say, but like, that's what parenting is. So, it is so weird. Yeah. Like anybody can be a parent. I don't know. That's a whole <laughs> thing. But like anybody can be a parent. Like it, it doesn't matter like who you are. Just so if you end up with a kid. <laughs> yeah, but, well, you know, it, it, just historically, though, one, one additional thing to think about and going back to the MPAA and actually going back several, several podcasts ago, you know, when you when you talked about the Academy Awards. And mm-hmm. you know the the people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and by the way, you guys want to want to talk about Riverdale being the best show on no, television? It, yeah, there you go. I, we hadn't mentioned it so far, so I figured you guys want to work in some place. Um, a drinking but, game uh, out in the good <laughs> place. So we should talk about the cast of Riverdale all leaving. Um, but anyway. Um, but what I was going to say is, you know, going back to that and saying, you know, what, why does the Academy Awards have any more validity than any other? And it is, it is basically a 
award show targeting big dumb white guys. I mean, that's who mm-hmm. that's who that's who created it. That's who it's aimed at, and that's. But you know, this is the other end of the of of the machine where you know that same audience is is determining what is appropriate for films and and ratings and you know so it's uh you know i think it's it's you know it is very much the same the same machine that is uh rating the films that is uh deciding which one succeeded at a uh, spectacular level Mm -hmm. making and as we know from that episode canon making always has an agenda Mm-hmm. So that would be that would be a, that would be a definite future show. What is canon making? Yeah, What's so the, but like you know, like what we what we watch and what we consume and what we categorize as appropriate all has an agenda behind it. Sometimes that agenda is just I want to make as much money as possible, but that's an agenda all on its own. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I would like to make as much money as possible. <laughs> so, so give us a five star review. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is, I mean, there aren't any easy answers for this one. And it's, you know, we're not going to resolve anything. They've been, we didn't even talk about the fact that like things like the fact that the ratings aren't consistent from one medium to another, like, you know, Mm. from one country to another, but like you move, uh, you move a PG 13 movie to television, it becomes TV 14. They edit out all the swear words because the FCC has says you can't have them. So it's actually more, it's actually more censored but gets a higher rating because the, the ratings don't don't match up. Marvel and DC in comic books have their own have their own letter guides that have similar letters, but they mean different things. T means a different thing in Marvel than it does in DC. There's no way for you to know that. You just have to, unless you'd like do a lot of research like I am. So there aren't good answers to these questions. And I think the answer is the one that we said at the very beginning. You got to know your own kid and then you do a lot of work or you can just not care. And I, and I think not caring is actually, I mean, if that's the decision you make, I think that's fine too. Hey, and that, that yeah. weird ed- editing things for TV, like and once again, who's making the decisions on this stuff? This is just an anecdote from my childhood that, I, and then we can end things. I saw the movie Cabaret on television when I was, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, whatever. And seeing that again in adulthood, I can't imagine what movie I actually saw on TV <laughs> because the entire story is about gay people and abortion. Yeah. Which probably wasn't on the ABC movie of the week in 1976. Well, um, 1976, it might have been. The rules were a little different. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I, I think. Yeah, I think. What, I, think seen, no. I think what I saw yes. was the music. The musical numbers devoid of any plot. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think PBS maybe, but not ABC. You're right. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, just a little anecdote. So, also, can we just remind everyone that uh, Canada edited out Trump of Home Alone Two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He was very. Well, that's that's really offensive. So I mean, good for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, years ago, I, I had the inter- I had the pleasure of interviewing Stan Lee, and I tried to steer the conversation towards the uh, comic book rating guide, and the, and and, uh, and I wanted to ask him questions about why Marvel Comics insists on terms like magia. And uh, Zavumbi, yeah, and, uh, Zavumbi, yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and Stan had no time for it. He just he literally waved me off, and I think he actually said on tape, he says, "I don't want to talk about that." <laughs> oh, okay, Stan. The prank is how many people brought up those three issues of Spider-Man with uh, the you know Harry's drug addiction. Yep. Oh, that, that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. that was a big like hot topic, I think, in a lot of documentaries, and he was probably just burned out. From yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> um, uh, sure. Mark and Terry, thank you. Thank you both yeah. for joining us. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah. Mark, anything you want to plug? Uh, yes. Um, selfish, uh, <laughs> selfish uh, self-promotion. Um, I actually, uh, two of my short stories are being uh, published in uh, Kyanite Press. It's a journal of speculative uh, fiction. Um, their winter issue's out now and the uh, spring issue coming out in may um so those are both uh, kindle and paperback and then oh, of course i have um my my three books out already the the dawn cluster those are also paperback and ebook and um and then the the usual you can find me on twitter facebook uh, mark j schultis right and that's linked in yeah. the show notes yeah congrats Terry. on the on the short stories nice. yep. oh thanks <laughs> Terry. Uh, I don't have much to plug, um, uh, Riverdale, uh, <laughs> 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 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> and and uh, let's and Charles Dickens. Are you happy? <laughs> Charles Dickens <laughs> was also a dick, but you know that's. <laughs> 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 What you meant to say was to watch The Good Place on Netflix. That's what you meant to say. Well, I listened to your, I listened to your uh, podcast on The Good Place, and I had not watched it prior to that. And now I am a, uh, I am a card carrying fan, and have, have binged them all. So oh, awesome. I hear wow. that. Guys. Nice. <laughs> 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 with people and watching our show uh, well i guess you can't watch our show you only listen to our show despite having not seen the things <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't i don't know fine. Uh, yeah. To us. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah by the way spoilers for everything we talked about today um yeah. <laughs> what, what about you uh, you can follow me on twitter at Haley rogers where i am slowly um coping with my life <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of like good place gifs <laughs> wayne what about you well thank god i thought she was going to say that she was uh, slowly unraveling <laughs> <laughs> she's re-raveling the unraveling <laughs> happened already <laughs> okay. I mean, wayne what about you N- nothing new this week nothing new nothing new. all right well you can follow me on Twitter at Chris Maverick or on my blog, which has not been updated in months at www.chrismaverick.com. You can follow the show on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, all of the places at Vox Popcast. You can follow the show's blog at www.voxpopcast.com, where we will be discussing what we'll be talking about next week. You can leave a comment. You can give us an ideas of what you'd like to see us talk about. If you enjoy the show, and we certainly hope you do, please subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or wherever the hell else you get podcasts from. And do us a favor, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. That helps other people find the show by goosing the algorithm and making us more popular. And, you know, don't mention whether we swear or not. Just you know, it's, it's it's a show for the people. Just, you know, <laughs> we would Please write us a review about all the swears. I would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fine. It's like, just review five stars. The swearing's not too bad. Loved it. Shared it with my five-year-old. Say something like that. I want to see that review. If that review is written by next week, we'll read you. We'll thank you on the show. We'll appreciate it. Um, I would like to thank Maximilian of Thought Form Music for our epic theme song, building ever so more epically and playing us out. Right. Once again, I'd like to thank our guests for joining us. I'd like to thank you at home for listening. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 See they even gave it to Pedro Almodovar for his last movie. And something they said in the blowjob scene, you could move sideways, not vertical. I've never heard of a sideways blowjob. Maybe that's cunnilingus. I, I don't know. It seems like you have to go up and down if you're going to blow jobs. So, I, I mean, this is, people have jobs for this?